Oh my god! Oh my god! Yo, oh yo, my god! Yo, we know that the next one will be able to kill, but he didn't want to risk it on the last oh, one. But it's Doesn't okay. need to! Big pop up from Tweak! He's jumping all over the stage! Welcome everyone to Inside Esports. I'm Matt Hempstead, and this past weekend there was one of the best and closest tournaments in Smash Ultimate's young history. I'm going to call up my friend Mies to recap the excitement in just a second, but first, let's check out the highlights from Low Tier City 7. Yeah, this is just keeping his spacing with Ivysaur. Just trying to play it as safe as possible. He's like, you know what? I, I, like, I have a comfortable lead right now, but... Oh, oh my god, the... Oh! oh! D! And now Mystic with the lead here uh, over 8 Man. We'll have to see what he can pilot here. Okay. No! No way! Oh, he's gonna, oh, oh. Gonna, oh, in the down air! Do no it again! Way. No way! Oh, it's disgusting! Oh! Up Time to grab. Goodness. This character's crazy, man. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Nate. Oh my god! Yo! Oh Yo. my god! Got so much damage with that white Pikmin latched on. Mars now at 80%. That's a forward smash, and that's the game. To Buzz takes a game five to go into grands. He auto cancels on those back airs, and now with that whip boost kick, we got to do whatever he wanted to, and that tip of the whip. Say goodbye to that stock, Mars. Tweak is gonna take that 3 1 and move on into grand finals. The Buzz wasn't ready for the full distance, so Tweak, without that covered, still living at 158, but it is grim for him. No chance to tech with that velocity. And ladies and gentlemen, and otherwise identifying, we are going to set number two. Ivysaur is at 109%, and with that downer, gets the setup once again. The tech chases from Tweak are insane. One purple Pikmin being gone could be really big to change up his game plan, though. He's been relying on double purples to do a lot of work for him. And look at the way Tweet continues to just dance on that center platform. We know that the next one will be able to kill, but he didn't want to risk it on the last oh, one. but it's Doesn't okay! Need to. Big pop up from Tweak. He's jumping all over the stage in the most intense grand finals you will see all month. TSM has closed out the victory under the hand of Tweak. Tweak survived that epic 10 game grand finals against the Buzz to win the ring at low tier City 7. And joining me now to break down all the intensity from LTC 7 is Smash commentator Mies. What's going on, man? What's up, man? Good to be back. Well, not back. I'm on the couch, but, you know, <laughs> hey. I'm, I'm, I'm as much back as I could be. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're close enough for us for now, anyways. Yeah. Uh, look, the big news from this tournament was Tweak winning, but the surprise was that he did it with Pokemon Trainer, and it was in a 10 game grand finals. So, how did he win LTC with this character that people didn't really know that he had in his back pocket? Well, the thing about Tweak is he's just such a phenomenal player. He could pick up anybody he really wants to and be successful. Um, we've seen him do things with Wario, with Wolf, Young Link, that, you know, he reversed 3 0 Mars with uh, Roy at Gommel. So the fact that he was able to pick up a character and be able to win a major within like a week or two weeks, I'm really not surprised at all. He, he's just that good of a player. So I guess the, the question is is why, right? Because you mentioned all the characters he's played in the past, and he's won tournaments with, with a bunch of them too. So what warranted this switch when he was already winning characters that some people would consider to be higher tier than Pokemon Trainer? I think Tweak was just in kind of a character crisis. He likes a lot of characters, but I don't think he's found that one that really kind of um, sits with him properly. Like before in Smash 4, he, you know, he had Bowser Jr. at first, and then he switched to Cloud and Bayonetta, and those characters just really clicked with him. And in this game, I feel like there's just, too, just so many characters that he really loves that he can't really decide which one he wants to stick with. Because honestly, I have that same problem where one week I'm playing one character, the next week I'm like, ah, oh, let me pick up some other character yeah, to yeah. just mess around with them, because there's just so much variety in this game. So I kind of understand um, why he's not sitting with one character all the time. So, so talk to me about the Grand Finals, because he lost that first set uh, before the reset, 3-2 uh, mm. to the buzz, and then he turned it around. So yeah. how did he get that done without even switching uh, Pokemon Trainer? Because he clearly believes in this new character that he has. Um, one of Tweak's great abilities is, is um, his ability to kind of just switch his styles on the fly. In that first game, we saw him, I think, playing a little bit over aggressive and the buzz being the defensive specialist that he is was able to take advantage of that and then if you watch set one and then watch it two immediately after that it's like a completely different player playing that same character he just completely switched up his style i don't think the buzz was ready for that and that's why he was able to win that second set 
And also, like in the past, we've seen Pokemon trainers, uh, you know, whether it's Leffen being probably the most noteworthy, and then Pandarian yeah. as well, who was in the top eight here as well. So not for Pokemon trainer. I mean, it's kind of been debated for a while ever since Leffen was saying that the character's not good enough or it takes too much practice. Where do you think he ranks now amongst the ultimate characters? Thing is to kind of go off that point you made about Leffen. That kind, that Leffen's opinion on the character kind of shows that one person's uh, viewpoints can kind of shift the meta. Yeah. Because after Leffen said that, a lot of people started to believe him that Pokemon Trainer wasn't that great. They were mid tier or whatever. But a lot of the real ones still knew that this character was super dangerous. Um, in my opinion, I would see Pokemon Trainer in the top 15 area. Right. I don't think they're in the top 10 because I feel like Charizard kind of holds that character back a little bit. Um, but I definitely see that character in the top 15 minimum. Now, the fun part about this whole thing is that, you know, Tweak almost didn't make it to Grand Finals because he was almost taken out by uh, a player named Sandstorm who's known for Brawlhalla, and he mm. almost took him out with, with Ken of all characters. So yeah. is, this, is he a legitimate character right now, or is this just a, a situation maybe he doesn't know the matchup, or, you know, mm. Sandstorm just caught him by surprise with some of the things he was doing? So Ken, if you guys don't know, uh, the last patch, Ken got, like... Hello buffs. If you look at the if you look at like the buff sheet, his sheet by himself is like one page long with all the stuff that they that, that they changed with him. Um, I think a lot of people are just starting to figure out that this character is definitely viable now because before the patches he was kind of it. Um, so we're yeah we're definitely going to start to see a lot more Kens and a lot more reuse pop up because the character is very viable right now after all the patches. And in that set too, I mean, uh, Sandstorm stirred with Ryu, but he went down 0-2. Then he switched it to, over to Ken. So like. I know they're like, you know, mirror characters or whatever, but what differences do they actually have that allowed him to pick it up with Ken and not Ryu? Um, much like Street Fighter, Ryu and Ken, even though they obviously have similar moves, they have different styles. Ryu has always been more of a defensive, I'm, I'm going to wait for you to do something and then react to a character, where Ken is just super aggro, in your face, I'm going to rush you down type of stuff. Um, and I think that switch, obviously, when he switched from Ryu to Ken, he also had to switch up his game style. Right. Um, and I think his opponents just, again, just weren't ready to kind of adjust to that complete 180 on the fly. And there's one more guy I want to talk about, because every time he shows up to a tournament, I get pretty hyped, and that's Elegant and his Luigi. Mm -hmm. I mean, he also just got sponsored, so I think that's really going to help him get out to some more events. But I really want this guy to win and get that, that belt. Uh, what do you think it's going to take for him to actually compete against some of the guys? Because, I mean, he double e Sam Samsora, but then lost to the buzz. He's definitely on, on the right path. Um, I know for a while he was struggling in Ultimate because of all the changes Luigi had from Smash 4 to Ultimate. Um, not as great of a character, but still just stupidly dangerous. One grab and that's that's your, your stock gone. And as long as that character still kind of has that grab combo in his repertoire, Elegant's always going to have a chance. And he's just been getting better and better and better with each tournament I've seen him. So again, I wouldn't be surprised if you, if you see Elegant in a few more top eights. Dude, I hope so. It's always hype to watch him play. Uh, Mies, mm -hmm. it's always amazing to have you on the show. Thanks for chatting with me, but next time you got to come into the studio so I can get that salty run back in some Ultimate. Oh, let's do it up, man. Hey, whenever, <laughs> whenever you guys want me back, I'll be back, okay? <laughs> awesome, man. I'm always done to get my ass kicked in Ultimate. Now let's get over to Camille, who's standing by with the latest news and report it.